It's no secret that The Witcher 3 is one of the most critically acclaimed and universally praised games available to play today. It's also accessible on pretty much all modern systems, from the Nintendo Switch all the way up to high-end PCs. With the release of the second season of The Witcher on Netflix across this holiday season, I'm confident that there are veteran players looking to return to the path and new players eager to delve into the Witcher game universe for the first time. In a previous video, I highlighted how you can set your own Mac on the path of the wolf and enjoy The Witcher 3 on your Mac, which is currently still not officially supported on Mac OS. I've included a link to my video where you can follow the steps to play Witcher 3 on your Mac today. An additional advantage of playing in the PC space is the vast amount of mods you can apply to increase stability, gameplay mechanics, change effects, improve textures, and add an array of user-generated content to enhance your time in the world of The Witcher. Luckily, most of the mods available for PC will also work on your Mac, and in this video I will show you where you can find mods and how to install them. Before attempting to download or install mods, you should have a copy of The Witcher 3 running on your Mac. You can click on the link here or in the description to complete this prerequisite. When this is complete, head over to Nexus Mods. Again, there is a link in the description to this website. Nexus Mods is a hub for various games where users can either create and distribute their own mod or participate as a customer and download them for use with their game. We will be assuming the role of the latter and viewing some available mods for The Witcher 3. In order to access the full content of Nexus Mods, you will need to create an account. As of the time of this video, you can elect to create a free account, but should the perks of a paid membership appeal to you, you may consider this option as well. For the purpose of this video, I will be using my own free account. Once you have logged into Nexus Mods, you can browse the mods available for The Witcher 3. I personally prefer to filter the results by all-time popularity, assuring me that there is a vast majority of players who have endorsed the stability and performance of the mod. Of course, if there is a particular mod or feature you are looking for, you can apply this to your search result as well. The first mod I will be downloading will be the Immersive Camera. The world of The Witcher is a beautiful place, and by using this mod, you can customise how you view it. I personally enjoy using it to pull the camera in close to capture smaller details otherwise missed, and put the game into first person, changing the detective elements into a far more immersive experience. We'll need to RTM, which stands for Read the Manual. It's the abridged version of RTFM, but I'll let your imagination fill in the blanks. In almost all cases, mod creators will use the description tab to outline the purpose, features, requirements, and installation of the mod. And Immersive Cam is no different. Become comfortable with reading through this as not all mods are built equal, and in some cases a missed instruction can send you around in circles for hours. In the instance of Immersive Cam, installation instructions are relatively straightforward. Download the mod content and place it into your mods folder in the directory. Let's first download the file. If you have not already done so, make sure you are logged in as you will be prompted to do so before you can download the file. Move across to the Files tab and select the current version of Immersive Cam. What's important at this step, and for all future mods you wish to install on your Mac, is that you won't be able to use a mod manager, so always make sure you download the manual version. Nexus Mods will then prompt you to upgrade to a premium account. Again, I'll leave that decision up to you and your requirements, but for me, the free account works just fine. As you can see, this is a relatively small file, so the download won't take long at all. Now let's head over to the porting kit. If you remember from the installation instructions, the creator specified that the mod needs to be dropped into the mods folder in your Witcher 3 directory. We'll be using the porting kit to locate this file path for us. Navigate to your library, right click on the Witcher 3 and select Open C Drive. A new finder window will appear and for anyone familiar with Windows architecture, you'll notice that this is the skeleton of a Windows build with a program folder labelled GOG Games. Open this folder to reveal the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and proceed to open this folder as well. This is the directory that the mod creator referred to, but you will probably notice that a mods folder is not present in this list. All you'll need to do is create this folder yourself. Let's head over to our download folder and prepare to move it across to our Witcher 3 directory. I would recommend having two finder windows open so you always have quick access to your Witcher 3 directory, as it can get tedious having to recall it through the porting kit. The Immersive Cam mod has been downloaded, and all we need to do is move it to the mods folder in our Witcher 3 directory. 
Now, I will warn you, my poor Mac struggles to run some of these intensive games, so I apologise in advance for my low resolution and low frame rate capture. The low quality is not a result of the mod, my game is actually running absolutely fine, it's just my 10 year old hardware showing its age when it comes to multitasking. But you will get to see how the mod works, so let's get to it. Now that we're in, we can use the arrow keys to begin changing the distance and orientation of the camera. This can be great to widen your field of view and absorb a more at a glance detail a game like The Witcher 3 has to offer. Next, you can use the square bracket keys which have been assigned to control pitch. In combination with a further distance, you can use the two to create a cinematic vista and capture sweeping shots of the land. Of course, you can also create a more claustrophobic atmosphere and bring the camera in close. This is great if you want to be right beside the action. And perhaps the most interesting angle of all is bringing the camera right in to assume a first person perspective. It really does change the way in which you play The Witcher, and gives indoor spaces especially a whole new level of immersion, inspecting details otherwise missed in third person. To reset the camera, simply press the question mark key, and you can also preset camera angles to quickly resume a unique look and feel depending on your playstyle. If you're intending to capture footage, or just want to have more control over how you interpret the wild world of The Witcher 3, Immersive Cam is an easy, plug and play tool that delivers just that. The next mod is one that returning players are sure to get a kick out of. The Witcher 3 tells the tale of Geralt's search for Ciri, and we are offered glimpses of her abilities throughout the campaign. Thanks to the mod Better Call Ciri, we can take her model and abilities outside of the scripted sequences and enjoy using her powers across all the continent. Back on Nexus Mods, visit the Better Call Siri page. I have left a link in the description below. Although the instructions are relatively brief, we'll be able to deduce that this is a slightly more in-depth procedure compared to Immersive Cam. Firstly, let's download all the necessary files. You will want to download all three files available. Now, return to your Finder windows and have your downloaded folders and files ready beside your Witcher 3 directory, which again can be accessed via the porting kit. Our first step is the same as Immersive Cam. Move the mod Better Call Siri folder we downloaded into the mod folder in your Witcher 3 directory. If you have been following along with this video, you should now have two folders inside your mod folder, Immersive Cam and now Better Call Siri. Return to your main directory. The second folder you downloaded is titled Bin. Inside this folder is a file path that we will need to follow in order to drop the necessary files into place. Start with the bin file in the Witcher 3 directory, and we'll need to continue along this path until we reach a folder titled PC, about 4 or 5 folders down the path. In your Witcher 3 folder, you will see a collection of XML files, and in your recently downloaded mod folder, just a single XML file labelled BCC menu. Copy that file across into your Witcher 3 folder. The final step involves using the text file we downloaded to instruct the game on our key bindings, we'll be modifying our registry to assign the 8 key to swap between Geralt and Ciri. The text file shows the areas that Ciri's model will be swapped to and from, and all we have to do is add these keys to our input. It may sound a little harder than what it is, so just make sure to follow along. To make it a little more legible, you can separate the text file as I have done so here. We don't need to access the Witcher 3 directory anymore, and we can navigate to our Documents folder. There you should have a folder titled The Witcher 3, and inside an executable file called Input Settings. Right click this file and open it with the text editor. Already you will begin to see the similarities between this file and the one downloaded as part of the mod. Comparing the file side by side, use the search function to locate Exploration. Once located in the text file, copy across the command line from the text file and enter it on a new line in the main file. Repeat this step for each of the headings for Combat and Horse. Save the text file and now boot up The Witcher 3. Once you're in, use the 8 key and you should see Geralt vanish and Ciri will take his place. Siri comes complete with her animations and combat abilities. 
Cutscenes will render in a shirtless Geralt to resume scripted sequences, with Ciri standing eerily in the foreground, but otherwise this mod provides a seamless way to experiment with a character we only get to enjoy in fleeting circumstances. This last mod is designed specifically for users that are having trouble running The Witcher 3 on their Mac, even on low settings. The Witcher 3 Ultra Low does exactly what it says, reduces the graphics to an absolute minimum. It's not exactly the best way to play The Witcher, but if you are experiencing stability issues, this mod can help smoothen the game. Reviewing the mod page, which is linked in the description, this requires us to download an archive set of files and replace the existing ones in both our Witcher directory and our documents folder. Now that we have seen this process from previous mod installations, we should be building confidence in navigating these locations. Once you have downloaded the file, you may need to use an archiving tool to open it. Tools such as the Unarchiver can be downloaded from the App Store, which will do just that. Inside are two files, rendering.ini and user.settings, that need to replace existing files in our Witcher 3 directory and documents folder respectively. We'll start with our rendering.ini file. This file needs to be placed in the base folder, which can be reached via first entering the bin and then config folder. As noted by the mod author, it is recommended to make a backup of the existing rendering.ini file. For now, I'm going to place it on my desktop. Once backed up, replace the rendering.ini file with the one just downloaded. Now, head over to your documents and enter the Witcher 3 folder. Repeat the same process with the user.setting file, make a backup and replace. Now prepare yourself for some early 2000s graphics. As you can see, most of the textures have been scrapped for blank surfaces, giving it a muddy, cel-shaded look. But what it lacks in style, it makes up for in performance. Even with the capture software running, I've noticed that recording returns a smoother image. So I hope for those running older hardware, they notice an improvement too. I hope this tutorial has helped you enhance your experience with The Witcher 3 on your Mac so far and I encourage you to continue exploring the Nexus community to try many other mods that are available. Although what we installed today is fairly simple, they have given you the building blocks for what most manual mods will require of you when getting them up and running. I will note that although many are compatible and just require patience and concentration, some unfortunately are not going to run. Given that, depending on your machine's capability, you can look into altering lighting effects, improving textures, remapping gameplay elements, as well as quality of life improvements, such as removing weight limits, auto looting, and alternative control schemes. Either way, mods offer a longevity to games that otherwise are terminated by a developer roadmap, so make sure to reach out to mod creators and give them the thumbs up for their hard work. And finally, I would recommend making a backup of any existing save files just in case a mod corrupts your data. Thanks for watching, and you can let me know what mods you are looking forward to installing in the comments below.